it makes no logical sense to doubt as a first and necessary step the authenticity of the stratford man william shakespeare as a fake mask of the true dramatist genius and real author of the first folio as long as as long as, at the same time, the most plausible singular candidate. Marlowe, in the Stratford's man place, with a comprehensive background and a coherent story of his entire life and his complete literary activities, has not been convincingly developed and understood. That's the second necessary logic step. The missing absolute necessary second logic autobiographic step always provided, a Stratford genius, never existed, must disclose the all-encompassing, full artistic dimensions, of the real and true contemporary dramatist, and poet-author genius of, Hamlet, forced to remain concealed, throughout his entire life. A precondition for any second step related questions is the acceptance of a once deadly threatened poet Marlowe as the only true Shakespeare who survived by faking his death with the support of the crown, living and writing henceforth under an inconceivable multiplicity of cover names. If you do not feel able to take this step, feel free to simply stop here. Is it conceivable at all that from the literary universal genius, Marlowe in the late 16th century Virtually nothing was printed during his alleged life, that is, his first thirty years, under his name. But only after his alleged death, 1593. Why no evident and logical contextual arguments are accepted that congenial Marlowe, already during his alleged lifetime, may have written translated and published under a multiplicity of pseudonyms such as Sylvester, Chapman, George Wither, Breton, Gager, Bass, Puttenham, and others? Marlowe the surviving true Shakespeare. Where did he live? Where did he travel? During his entire life? At what years? In what countries? With which persons he communicated and corresponded? Etc. Etc. Banished and exiled. Marlowe had to write under concealed and invented pen names, often trickily borrowed and modified from real subjects. How many pseudonames beyond Shakespeare he used? Under how many incognito names he may have lived? Beyond his literary pseudonames? Such as Thomas Shelton, Toby Matthew, and others? Mustn't Marlowe, as Shakespeare, identical with the true author of Hamlet, have left an abundant wealth of indirect, biographic contextual traces throughout his long life, compared to the lifespan of the Stratford dummy. When and where did the only true universal poet genius Shakespeare, alias Marlowe, eventually die? You should be aware that the total negation of a logical and plausible historical Marlowe Shakespeare conspiracy fatally prevented any research for plausible, conclusive findings, proofs, evidences, contextual documents of the full life of a surviving universal genius under an unconceivable multiplicity of literary pen names. In this respect, Rose Barber, an influential Marlowean scholar, dealt with one essential aspect of the autobiographic related second step questions.
she pointed to undeniable, highly obvious contextual references in Shakespeare's plays. With obsessive themes of Marlowe's fatal biographical life situation. Resonating for instance, in In Marlowe's slander and false accusations. As in Much Ado. Othello. Measure for Measure. Sonnets, for instance 66, 111, 150, and others. Resonating in Marlowe's Destiny. Of Exile and Banishment. Which can be shown, believe it or not. In 22 characters of 19 Shakespeare plays. Also resonating, in Marlowe's narrative, of Assumed dead, faked death But alive Which can be shown, believe it or not In 33 characters, of 18 Shakespeare plays The insurmountable hurdle for every academic Shakespeare expert. Marlowe could by no means have been deceased. And being alive at the same time. Resurrections are possible. But only in religious beliefs. This disastrous failure to reach a solution for the unspeakable Shakespeare authorship resulted ultimately from the fact that from the very beginning, Literary Academe abandoned any imaginability of an autobiographical contextuality. Shakespeare Academe could never ever imagine or accept that the Shakespeare authorship enigma was a historical conspiratory rescue action for the literary and universal genius Marlowe. By no means solely orchestrated with a singular pen name, Shakespeare, invented by the genius himself but with an inconceivable multiplicity of literary pseudonyms. The auto biographical contextual incorporation of Marlowe's destiny into Shakespeare's plays unfortunately blocked all notions and possibilities of thinking, that is. Also other contemporary author pseudonyms belonged to Marlowe. Shakespeare was by no means, the sole literary code name of the poetic genius Christopher Marlowe. An additional significant consideration. A change of the multi-pseudonymity paradigm will enable an open-world community in the future. To abandon the far-fetched, rather bizarre idea of a Shakespeare cooperation, co-working, with so many contemporary authors, so-called group theory. The arguments for the multi-pseudonymity thesis of the true Shakespeare are difficult to refute, they are too robust to be easily destroyed, mainly because of their coherent contextuality. The arguments have been compiled in recent years in a series of YouTube videos.